This is the third FRED video tutorial. It focuses on plotting a complex formula, namely the Taylor rule for setting the target federal funds rate. We'll proceed in three steps. First, providing the basics of the Taylor rule. Second, using FRED to build and plot the Taylor rule formula. And finally, third, analyzing the graph. Let's begin by focusing on the components of the Taylor Rule. Capital R is the target federal funds rate. Pi is the inflation rate measured by the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index found in FRED. Y is the measure of real GDP also found in FRED. And Y star is a measure of normal or potential output. We'll use the CBO's estimate, which is found in FRED. Other components of the Taylor rule include the long-term real interest rate, little r, pi star, which is the target inflation rate of the Fed, and parameters alpha and beta, which measure the sensitivity of Fed policy to inflation and output, respectively. Let's now go to FRED and use it to create the Taylor Rule. At the FRED website, we start by clicking on Data Tools, and then on Create Your Own Graphs. Once that's happened, we can begin by entering the first indicator, Real GDP, in the search box. GDP C1 is the FRED code. Then we click Add Data Series. There's our first graph. Now we're going to modify that line. So we go to Add Data Series, then click on Modify Existing Series. We're going to add another indicator from FRED, namely Potential GDP from the CBO, GDP POT. And we're going to use a formula to estimate the so-called output gap, the gap between actual GDP and potential GDP. We do this by clicking on Create Your Own Data Transformation under Edit Data Series 1 and inputting the formula into the formula box. There's our formula. Let's redraw the graph. It's measured in percentage deviations from potential GDP. Now we're going to add another series, namely the price indicator of personal consumption expenditures so we can measure the inflation rate. The FRED code is PCEPI. That will allow us to complete our formula for the Taylor Rule. But we first have to change the units of the price indicator from an index to percent change from year ago. Now we multiply that by a half, which is beta in the Taylor rule, and we add in the inflation rate represented by C, and we multiply the next component by a half, or alpha, times the deviation of inflation from the target, which we will assume to be 2%, as Taylor did, and finally we add on the long-run real interest rate, which Taylor assumed to be 2%. There's our Taylor rule. Let's see what it looks like. That's our first version. We're going to add to that graph the actual federal funds rate to see how the Taylor rule compares with the behavior of the funds rate. This is now a second line, a new line. We now have the Taylor rule and the Fed funds rate but you'll notice the Fed funds rate is in percent change from year ago and we'll need to change it to percent. Now that we have both series plotted, let's apply the saved graph settings from a previous tutorial and let's also adjust the date range to make the graph look better. And now we have a very good version and we can analyze what it's telling us. Notice the Taylor rule and the Fed funds rate generally tend to move together, but in the late 60s and 1970s, the Taylor rule was above the funds rate for much of the time. 
that's when inflation was rising. Then in the 1980s, that reversed, that's when inflation was falling. In the most recent period in the Great Recession, notice the Taylor Rule pointed to a negative funds rate, but the funds rate was stuck at zero, the zero bound. Let's save our work as a PDF file for submission. I'm using Google Chrome as a browser, so I click the disk icon in the bottom right. But if you're using Firefox or another browser, your icon might be in the top right. Thanks very much for watching.